let your head get in the way Can't be defined by your mistakes You know you try and you try really hard But sometimes you fall You yeah, sometimes hey, you fall. Welcome to another episode of Soulful Conversations I wanted to talk to you today about a few healing lessons that we can learn from Risa Tisa's Who the f*** did I marry? Saga before I get into this video, I want to share a TikTok I came across where this guy pretty much sums up how I've been feeling in regards to people's opinions about Risa Tisa failing to see these red flags or failing to leave. Because at the end of the day, I really get tired of y'all grandstanding as if y'all have never fell short of being your high vibrational self-loving selves. <laughs> I didn't even finish it. I'm not going to lie. I didn't even finish it. I really didn't. I said I wasn't going to react to the story and everything like that. And I'm really not. I'm actually here to talk about people's reaction to her. I'm hearing that she's doing well now and that she's receiving some monetary value or compensation for her story and things like that. So shout out to her. Hope she's doing very well. It's unfortunate what happened to you, but hopefully good things are in your future. The problem that I have is that it started off as positive. Everybody was just like, oh my God, I feel so sorry for her. All these different things. But as with everything on the internet, it turned negative. I seen a lot of people be like, how the fuck did she not know this, that, and the third? You thought that this guy, they found this picture. You thought that this guy was a VP of this stuff. I don't feel bad for her. That's the kind of guy who she chose, blah, blah, blah. You guys, I mean, come on. I mean, come on. Where is the ability to show grace and empathy, consideration? Why do we always lose that ability? Whenever we see somebody who's sharing a story about their struggle, suddenly you guys become experts on hindsight. We all know it's 2020. Suddenly you guys just become experts on all this shit. The question is like, who lies about all that kind of stuff? And I didn't, I didn't get through all the parts because it's just too much. <laughs> it's, it's too much. It's driving me crazy. But the question is like, you wouldn't even think that somebody would be capable of lying about this much stuff. You wouldn't think that somebody would even be capable or even willing to act like this. So if somebody does, you're just like, you just believe it. I mean, it started off like, oh my God, people felt sorry for this and that. And I'm seeing a lot of people with negativity towards her. And it's just like, why? I thought you guys said you're good people. Like, what's up? Why do y'all act like this every, I'm talking every single time. Starts off good, understandable. Then people start digging into shit that she said not to dig into for her own safety and things like that. You got the pictures being posted, names being revealed, you know, all these different things. She asked y'all not to. It's not your story to reveal. Why is it so hard for us to always show grace? Like, I don't understand that. And this is why I say, like, people who know me know, like, this is just who I am. This is how I am all the time. Like, extending grace, extending grace, right? And if you watch some of my other content, some of my other videos on TikTok, you know, this is just how I am. Be mindful of the struggles that other people are going through and see if you can see things from their perspective as opposed to just challenging them and making them feel like they were stupid or they were dumb or something like that. And be like, you know, I can understand that. I wouldn't have moved that way, but I can understand how you did. Hopefully that you're in a good place. But nah, instead, uh, I don't feel bad for her and this and that. God damn, y'all. Fuck. First, intuitive energy is real, you guys, and we really, really need to hone in and use it more. I know for me, prior to my healing journey, I really didn't put a whole lot of stock into my intuitive energy or my intuition or that gut feeling of anything. I would feel it and then I would forget it. We often tend to contribute that to maybe you know, judgment of another individual. So it's like, uh, maybe I'm just tripping. Maybe I'm judging them too hard. We often tend to convince ourselves that we may be paranoid. There are so many levels, depending on your trauma, that may cause you to ignore your intuitive energy or ignore your intuition or that gut feeling. And I'm telling you, your gut feeling, the bitch is right. She is almost always right. Stop second guessing and telling yourself, oh no, I'm being judgmental. He's probably not that bad. Oh, because I came from a decent background with two parents and he didn't let me not judge him. Maybe that contributed to how he is today, which may very well be true. However, it's not your job to fix anyone. 
okay? Your job is to protect you. And that was one of the things that I tend to miss a lot prior to my healing journey with the way that I navigated the world. I guess I always looked at my life as a privilege and that tend to make me be a little bit more, a little too considerate, too considerate of other people's backgrounds and try not to judge them too harshly because they didn't have two parents or they came from a rough background or they had a rough start in life, whatever it is. There are too many times people are able to overcome that if they want to. As we dig back into this whole self-love thing, because you already know, that's what I teach, right? We're getting back into the self-love. Self-love is the cornerstone of learning a level of discernment that you're going to need to navigate the world amongst people, especially when you're when you tend to be very empathetic. You tend to be very non-judgmental of people. You tend to want to help people. You tend to want to heal people. You have to have a certain level of discernment. And in order to increase that, you're going to have to increase your self-love. In order to put yourself in a place where you're able to walk away easily, you're going to have to increase your self-love. Another aspect of it that we tend to struggle with is when we see red flags and we ignore it. And then we ignore another one. And then we ignore another one. Now we then stay too long in a situation and we feel stuck. Like you've already invested so much time. You've, you've already done so much for this person. You gave a mile and he's grown an inch. Maybe if I just keep up, at some point, he's going to change. One thing that I've noticed that abusive and manipulative people tend to do is, one, when they love bomb you, they love bomb you for the purpose of you remembering what that feels like, right? So when they drop the bad shit on you later, you're just trying to get back to what you originally got from that person. You can't forget how good it felt with that person at that moment. This is just a rocky point that you have to get past. And I can guarantee you, you're almost never going to get past it, okay? You're going to get past it for a second. And then you're going to go right back to it. Another thing they do is they move the goalposts. So it's almost like, okay, if I do this much, I'll be cool. And it's like, no, you got to do so much more. And you got to do so much more to the point that this person's never going to be happy, right? It's, you're never going to be able to do enough to keep this person happy. While Risa Tisa had so many red flags, right? We know it's just like, girl, how did you not? One thing I noticed that I thought was really, really odd was it was almost like when he told her something, he almost had to prove it immediately. Because I don't know too many, and, and I don't know if she was asking these questions over time, I can't imagine the first month or two you're asking to see his bank statements or the first month or two you're asking to see all of this evidence of what this man is saying, right? That is weird. And if you're having to do that, then you should not be dating that individual to begin with. But um, I did notice that over time, it was like he was constantly proof showing her proof. And unless she was asking for the proof, that was a red flag. If she was asking for the proof, it was, should have been a red flag to her. If I got to keep asking for you to prove stuff to me, and I don't mean prove you love me by physical attention, of course. I'm talking about you say you got this in your bank and I need to see your bank statement. You say you got this car from your job. I need to see a picture of the car. That stuff was very weird and very telling to me. And I feel like that happens because they want you, they want to bring your memory back to scratch, right? So if you have five lies that was never proven to not be a lie, you remember those five lies. So that six feels a lot heavier versus if you have five lies that were now, that were proven a long time to not be a lie by showing each one of these things, then... Number six has less of an effect. It's like starting all over again because these have already been proven not to be a lie. So this one is just a new one that you're suspecting. Is it me? Because he's constantly proving to me that these things are factual. Maybe it's me. Why am I not trusting this person? You have to trust yourself. That's the, another lesson that is learned. You have to trust yourself. And I feel like she went in this way too long because she was not trusting herself. Lastly, you can turn your pain into profit, baby. Obviously, she has showed us that. Now, while I do not recommend or even suggest anyone to get on the platform and tell their story out of bitterness in an unhealed state where it's going to come off angry and not productive, and when you're not safe, because exposing any kind of narcissism is a very, very unsafe thing to do. I want you to be very mindful of that because you're safe and you're healing and first and foremost. There's a way to profit without necessarily exposing the individual. You see, you can do it 
this shit every day. I get on here. I don't particularly tell my stories about each individual, but I kind of give my experiences, how I heal, what I've learned, and so on. To recap this video, let's get into the quick lessons that I feel like Risa, I feel like we could learn from her story. One, if a red flag is red flagging, pay attention to that shit. Don't polish your nails to match it. Grab your red bottoms and walk the fuck out. Do not stay in it long. Don't stay in it long enough for you to get attached. Don't stay in it long enough for you to feel like you've invested too much. You have been shown exactly who this person is. You have to trust yourself. The mere fact that she was trusting what this man was saying over top of trusting her gut was an extreme red flag that she needed some healing. Number two, increase your self-love so that your level of discernment is up to par and so that you have the ability to walk away. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Add into it to practice into your journey. Listen to her loud and clear. Listen to her loud and clear unapologetically. And last but not least, you can turn your pain into profit when you're in a healed state. Go out here and help the girls. In addition, I just want to say this. I'm proud of Risa for being able to go get her coins, but I ain't even going to hold y'all. I kind of wished that someone who was profiting in this manner would have been somebody who actually lost money to a man or in a situation like this or somebody who was left with a child. Because based on Risa's story, she was not at a loss of money. By the grace of God, rejection is protection. So her body rejected the baby and so she miscarried. But there are many women who have the same story who even lost a hell of a bag or who is right now a single mom of a child. I really wished this particular support, I'm going to be honest with you, would have went to one of those individuals especially in a monetary value, because it is extremely hard to dig yourself out of a romance scam and or becoming a single mom and having to take care of a child by yourself. And so we know that this saga continues, you guys. I don't even know that I'm going to dig deeper than this. Apparently his ex-wife has come out. Her son has come out. He has now done an interview, which by the way, he is a liar. I have never, I'm not even a body language expert, you guys. But I watched that interview and I was just like, sir, you are a liar. You are a liar. And then on top of that, you are hella narcissist to be able to even show your face and try to defend this story with a lie. Anyway, until next time, love yourself, protect your energy, and deal with life's bullshit with grace and gratitude.